my spirit is just overflowing today because there are people out there today who are listening to my voice that have been carrying trauma, difficulties, the pain and scars of poor choices from the past. Today I want to talk to you about what to do, where to go, when the pain of the past lingers, when no matter how far you get away from it, it's still there, it's still stuck with you, and you can't seem to move forward. You see, everyone has a past. Everyone has things that have happened to them that weren't their fault, that happened in the past, that caused pain at the time. Everyone can look back and remember the poor choices they made, the mistakes that they've made, the things that they've done that weren't right, that caused pain in their own lives and in the lives of others. Yes, all of us have a past, but most people have healed and moved on and they don't carry the pain with them. They have memories. They can remember what happened, but they've moved on and it doesn't affect their life today. But there are some of you out there today that the pain of the past lingers in your life and it won't go away. The hurts of yesterday, <clears throat> the difficulties, the challenges, the mistakes that you've made, the things that other people did that weren't your own fault even, they linger in your life. And it's like a ball and chain to you. No matter where you go, it's attached to your life. And no matter how hard you try to escape it, the pain sticks with you. And when you try to progress, you can move a little bit, but it isn't long until the chain comes to its end and it's stretched out as far as it can go and all of a sudden the heaviness the weight of yesterday holds you back it keeps you down and you'd like to fly and you'd like to move forward and you'd like to progress in life but you can't because that ball and chain is holding you down you have a wound in your life that won't heal it's become infected and from time to time it scabs over and it looks like it's going to heal because on the surface there's a scab and, and you think that things are going better and that, that it's behind you, finally behind you, and you can move on until something happens in your life. And it's like that part of you, that scab, gets bumped and it opens up and all of a sudden all of the memories, all of the pain, all of the difficulties comes oozing out as you realize it was just on the surface that you were being healed. But underneath it all, the infection, the wound is still there and it hasn't changed a bit. In fact, it's just festered in your life because it hasn't been dealt with at the source. It's become like a scab in your life. It's become so a part of who you are that it's embedded in your identity. It's become a part of your story. It's become a part of who you are. And that when people think of you and talk about you, they can't mention your name without thinking about what happened to you yesterday. They can't think about your life without remembering the poor choices you made. You've become known as the alcoholic or the one who was a drug addict or, or the divorcee or the failed businessman or the man who dropped out of school or the, or the woman who's had too many partners in her life. You become known as the pain in your past. You become known as the person who had a childhood trauma happen to you, the one who was abused. You become known as the one who once abused. You become known by your pain. You become identified to the point where it's hard to know where you begin and the pain of your past ends. It's become embedded in your identity to the point that even you think of yourself as your pain. Oh, and you dream of changing the past. You, you sit around thinking of the what ifs. What if I had been born in a different situation? What if I had been born to different parents? What if I had never met that guy? What if 
I had never made that poor choice? What if that, that person who harmed me had never harmed me? What if I had never been made fun of in school? What if I had never been through what I have been through? What if I'd never done what I've done? And, and the what ifs only haunt you more because you know that you can't go back and change what's happened to you. And you feel like an outcast. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody, you feel like an outcast. Yes, on the outside of your life, you look normal, but on the inside of your heart, you feel like others around you are normal, but there's something wrong with you. You feel like other people around you are human and somehow you're less than human. You're like a, a soldier who was wounded, shot on the field of battle, and there's nothing you can do. In fact, you're not a help to anyone. You feel like you're simply a burden to everyone while you lay there in life and bleed. You feel like an outcast in society. In the Old Testament, the Bible talks about people who got the disease leprosy. It was so devastating and so contagious that there were rules that if you were a leper, you had to live outside away from everybody else and that if somebody came near you, you had to warn them, I'm unclean, stay away so that they could avoid you and keep away from you. And, and today you may not have leprosy on the outside of your life, but you have leprosy on the inside of your life. You feel like you've got something that people need to stay away from. So you stay on the outside of relationships. You don't want anybody to get close to you lest they catch a glimpse of the pain that you have identified as your own life. You feel like that if they ever get to know who you really are, they won't love you. They'll send you to the outskirts of their life, an outcast to be kept away from them. But I want you to know that Jesus came for you. I don't know who I'm talking today, but hear me by the Spirit. Jesus came for you. He wants you. Yes, Jesus is the one. You may have tried other things in your life. You may have tried to fix yourself and try the ways of the world. But I came to tell somebody that it is Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Son of the living God that can heal you. He can turn your past into purpose. He can turn your bad memories into good ministry. He can change the scabs into in the scars. Hallelujah. Jesus is looking for you. I want to read today in Psalms, verse 147. This is the character and the nature of our God. Psalms 147, verses 2 through 4. In verse 2, it says, The Lord builds up Jerusalem. Jerusalem at this time was the center of God's people. And there were people who were on the outskirts. They were outcast. But God wanted to bring them in. Can I tell you something today? God wants to bring you in. He wants to gather you. While you feel like the world wants to reject you, God wants you. He wants to pick you. You haven't been picked last. You've been picked first. In fact, do you know that even when you feel absolutely alone, God is near you? And when you feel you're at your worst, God is near you. In fact, the Bible says that God is near those who are brokenhearted and have been crushed in their spirit. You want to know where God is today? If you're brokenhearted today, He is near you. If you're crushed in your spirit, God is near you. He's always been near you. And He's not just a God who watches. He's a God who reaches. God has been reaching out for you. He wants to help you. He sent me today to give you this message because he wants to reach out to you and bring you into him. He knows what he can do in your life. He knows he can do what no one else can do. And so his arms are outstretched.
stretched. In fact, God loved you so much that he didn't just watch, but while you were at your lowest, while you were at your worst, while you were in the the pit of despair, God sent Jesus Christ, his son, to come to this world, to take on the form of human flesh, to live for you, to die for you, to rise for you. God's message to you is that he is reaching out to you because he loves you. He loves you. I want to tell you something about the love of God. God loves you where you are, but he won't leave you as you are. Oh, glory to God. God's love is transformative and it will change you, but it must be received. You must let God love you. You must open up your heart today and say, God, come and do in me what only you can do. And God will love you. He will restore you. He will gather you. He will call you his own. You will no longer be one of those people that are alone and by yourself. No, you will become a part of his family. He will draw you into the center of himself. And when the world wants to know who you are, God will say, that one belongs to me. He is an outcast no longer. Yes, God gathers the outcast. In verse 3, it says, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. I want you to know that God can heal you in a way that no one else can. God is the great healer of the body. God is the great healer of the mind. God is the great healer of the emotions of the soul and of the very spirit. God is the healer. Every aspect of your life, God can heal. But I want you to know God's not necessarily going to heal you the way that you might like. Let me explain to you. When we think of healing from the past, we often think of the pain is completely gone. The memories are wiped away. We've forgotten all about what happened. And there are no scars left behind. It's as if it never happened. I want you to know that God doesn't heal that way. And there's an important reason. And if you ever catch a hold of this in your spirit, you won't want the past to be gone. Because the way God heals is that he turns the pain into purpose. That's right. God takes the situation you've gone through, the difficulties that have happened in your life, the poor choices you have made, the things that maybe even aren't your fault, and he turns the pain of that into your purpose in life. That's right. God wants to take what once caused you pain and use it to heal other people. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 What if I told you today, instead of the pain going completely away, that that God would ease it in such a way that it wouldn't cause you to be held back. It wouldn't be your identity. It, It wouldn't be who you are, but it would be used by you to change and help people around you. You know, the human body is a magnificent thing. When we break a bone and it's set correctly, it'll grow back stronger than it was before. It can grow back better than it was before. God wants to heal you in such a way that the part of you that was wounded becomes stronger than it ever was before. But even though it's strong, there may be a sensitivity to it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've got a physical pain in your life. Years ago, I cut the tip of my finger off and they, they, they took the mangled meat and bone and they sewed it all back together. And, and if you look close, you can still see the scars. And it doesn't bother me until I bump it on something and then I feel the slightest nudge of pain. It's, a not, it's not enough pain to cause me problems or difficulties. It's enough to help me remember that I was once broken, but God healed me. Are you listening to me today? God is going to heal you in such a way that when people come into your life and bump into you, the pain is going to come back just enough for you to remember. The pain is going to make you sensitive to the hurts of others. Some of you have been through difficulties in your life and trauma in your life, and, and, and God is going to heal you up in such a way that it won't bother you. It won't be on your heart and on your mind. It won't hold you back in your daily life until you come upon somebody who's going through what you've been through, and then the little bit of pain is going to show. It's like you get it bumped just a little, and you remember how it hurt. And let me tell you what that does. It makes you compassionate. It makes you sympathetic. It makes you be the kind of person that just can't sit still while somebody else goes through something. But you have to get up. You have to go after them and you have to help them because God wants to turn the pain of yesterday in the pur- into the purpose of today. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. God turns pain into purpose. 
and he will turn bad memories into good ministry. Do you know within the memories that you're trying to get rid of and trying to forget, there are seeds of wisdom and knowledge that other people need? You wish it would go away, but I'm telling you, God can heal you in such a way that it won't be on your mind. It won't affect your thinking or your life until you come across that person who's going through what you've gone through. And all of a sudden, the wisdom of the Lord, the the wisdom of the past, the, the lessons that you've learned will come to your mind. And you can go to them and you can share with them the experiences that you had and the healing that God brought and the scriptures that mattered to you and the things that impacted and changed your life. Don't wish that God would erase the memories. Just pray that God would heal you in such a way that your memories would turn into your ministry. There are some of us who are going to come across that person and we hadn't been through what you've been through. And when it's time to speak something into their life, we don't have anything to say, but there's something in your memory. You've got something to say. You've got something to speak. You can speak into their lives and cause an impact that the rest of us cannot because you've been through something. God wants to heal you in such a way that your pain becomes purpose, your memories become ministry, and the scabs become scars. A scab is is a sign that something is being healed. A scar is a sign that something's been healed. Hallelujah. A scar is a sign that you've been through the battle, but God kept you and healed you and you survived. A scar is a sign that you were once wounded, but now you've been through it and you're healed. Can I tell you something? If you wish for your life to have no scars of the past, what you're really wishing for is that no one else can look at you and see that God heals and delivers. You see, scars in your life are a witness to the world of what God can do. You ought to wear them proudly. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Scars are a witness to the world. So yes, when people look at your life and they hear about your story, they will then take a look at what God has done in you, how he's changed you, how he's lifted you up, how he's turned your mess into a message, and they will see the scars of your life and know that you were once broken and now you are healed. And can I tell you what that does? That gives people hope. Hallelujah. The basis for ministry is not to stand above people and tell them what to do. The basis for ministry is that you've already been through it. That's why Jesus came and he was tempted like we are. And the Bible says he's, we don't serve a God who can't be touched by the feelings of our hurts and pains because he's been through them like us. He understands ministry is from beside, hallelujah, not necessarily from above. Your scars as you pull up next to someone who's hurt and you talk to them and you you roll up your sleeves and you show them the scars. You open your heart and you tell them the story. You know what happens? They look at your scars in your life and they think for the first time, some of them are going to know for the first time, I can get through this. I can get through this. I can survive this. I want to do what that guy did. You can be a trailblazer today for other people so that they can see your life and follow your path and know that they're going to end up in a good place just like you did. Yes, God heals in such a way that it doesn't all go away. In fact, it becomes something that God uses for his glory to heal and bless and touch other people's lives. Let's look at verse 4. It says, He counts the number of the stars, and He gives to all of them a name. Do you know, scientists tell us there are billions and billions of stars. The observable universe, they call it. That means we can see as far as we can see, and we haven't found the end yet. And there are billions and billions of stars. More stars in space than there are grains of sand upon the earth. The number is staggering. And yet the God of the universe knows every single star intimately. He knows the day it began. He knows how powerful it is. He knows what's going on on the inside and he's given to every star a name. Oh, and if God names the stars in heaven, don't you think he names the people that he has gathered for himself? Yes, God will give you a name. God will give your name a different meaning. God will give purpose to your name. 
There's a thing that, that, that we say it's called AKA, also known as, and some people use it like as a stage name. I could be Mylon, also known as the pastor guy or something. And that, that's not my AKA. I don't have an AKA, but some people use that. Uh, but it can be used in a bad name too. It could be uh, used in a way that people identify your pain and your past with your name. But there's an even worse situation, and that is what I would call OKA, and it is only known as, and it's when you don't even have a name and an identity anymore, for all of your life has been completely described by your pain. I want you to think today about people in the Bible who were described that way. There was a woman with an issue of blood. We don't know her name. All we know is that she was a woman with an issue. There was a man with a withered hand. We don't know his name. All we know is that he was a man with a withered hand. There was a boy possessed by a devil. We don't know his name. We just know he was possessed by a devil. There was a woman caught in the act of adultery. We don't know her name. All we know is that she was caught in the act of adultery. And while the people who watched those around them might have identified them by their pain, God has given them a name. And while today we still tell stories about the woman caught in the act of adultery, the woman who was of a bad reputation, who cried on Jesus' feet, the man with the withered hand, the boy possessed by the demon, the woman with the issue of blood, we're still telling their stories because their stories are still touching our lives today. You see, God has turned their pain into purpose for us. He's turned their memories into ministry for us. Their scars are a witness that God God does miraculous things in people's lives. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? But yes, we may call them as the, the man with the withered hand or the woman with the issue of blood, but God calls them by their name. Can I tell you something? There's nothing better than when God Almighty calls you by your name. He has given you a name. He has shown you who you are. Do you know that your true identity comes from the one who made you and that's it? Your true identity doesn't come from what other people think about you. Your true identity doesn't come from the pains and, and problems of yesterday. Your true identity doesn't come from the mistakes that you've made. Your true identity comes from the God who created you. The Bible says you have been created in the image of God. You and I were born to be reflections of the goodness and the love of God. Now, I know that life has gotten to us and it has marred our reflection and sin has damaged us and and, and, and the fall of mankind has damaged the image. It's, it's marred it over. It's, it's made it blurry where it can't be seen clearly. But I want you to, to know that Jesus Christ can come into your life and restore the image of God in your life. In fact, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you in Christ is to begin to clean up the image of God so that when people look at you, they don't see religion. They see Jesus. They don't see anger. They see Jesus. They don't see hatred. They see the love of God. They don't see a woman with an issue of blood. They see you by your name. They see you by who you are. And while other people may continue to call you by your pain, you will know that your identity is in the name that God has given you. What does God call you today? Hear me. God calls you this. You are the one he sought after. God has called you the one that he loves the one that he wants. God calls you his son and his daughter. God calls you his prized possession. God calls you the one who was once lost but now is found. God calls you the one that he has lavished love upon. Yes, God calls you by a new name, a different identity. You may not change the name on your birth certificate, but what people see, what God sees, what the devil sees, what the world sees, what all of creation will see is that you are who God says you are. You are no longer attached to your past. Can you feel the ball and chain just fell off of your life? Can you feel the limitations have just broken off of your life? Can you feel that the pain of the past no longer is holding you back as God has set you free to move forward in Christ? Oh, that's what Jesus can do in your life. That's what God sent him to do in your life to gather those who have been outcasts, to heal up the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds, and to give you a new name, a place to belong, a new identity, 
a new way of viewing yourself, not through the eyes of your past, but through the eyes of your God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My identity is in Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for every soul out there listening to the sound of my voice today. God, that they would simply open their hearts to receive the healing power of Christ in their lives. No one can heal you like Jesus. I'm not saying your therapy is bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you need Jesus to empower everything. I'm not saying that uh, talking to your friends is bad. I'm not saying reading that book about healing is, is bad. I'm just saying you need the power of God in you. God will enable those things. I'm not telling you going to the doctor is a bad thing. I'm saying that when Jesus comes in you, every move you make will become empowered with healing. And it may not be overnight, but you know what? That's part of your story. God's writing his story in your life. Father, I pray for those who are, are, are unaware of the story you have for them. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would give them revelation today to see how it all turns out. That in you, there is a good ending. There's a good story. There's a good story that you want to turn the pain into purpose and the bad memories into good ministry. You want to turn the scabs into scars in their life. So if you're listening to me today, I want you to just open your heart. First, open your heart by believing. By believing there is a God and that He sent His Son to come and heal you and, and to save you and to make you one of his own. And then I want you to just ask him, Jesus, heal me. Heal me. And as you speak those words, I pray the power of love and healing will just flood over your soul right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, heal me, heal me. Heal my life, Jesus. Heal my life, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Save me, Jesus. Make me one of your own. I believe in you. I want to follow you. I turn away from doing it my way. I turn away from living for myself. And I turn to you, Jesus. I turn to you, Jesus. I turn to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who you are, but you're listening to me right now, and God is healing your life. He's doing something in your life. He's healing in your life. You feel it in the depths of who you are. Just let go right now. Just let go. Let the tears fall down your face if you need to. Just scream if you need to. Just shout if you need to. Just stand up. Just run. Whatever you need to do, just let it go right now in the name of Jesus so that you can be free, that you can break free. Hallelujah. And then listen, as God calls you by your name. God calls you by your name and not by your pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.